Hi everyone, this is Amina and I am back to read another chapter from the book Matilda with y'all. So as you might recall, the last chapter that we read was about Miss Trunchbull visiting Matilda's class, but her friend Lavender is planning to put, pull a prank on her. So in this chapter, we will find out more about how that prank goes. So let's begin. This chapter is called The First Miracle. Matilda sat down again at her desk. The Trunchbull seated herself behind the teacher's table. It was the first time she had sat down during the lesson. Then she reached out a hand and took hold of her water jug. Still holding the jug by the handle, but not lifting it yet, she said, I have never been able to understand why small children are so disgusting. They are the bane of my life. They're like insects. They should be got rid of as early as possible. We get rid of flies with the fly spray and by hanging up fly paper. I have often thought of inventing a spray to get rid of small children. How splendid would it be to walk into a classroom with a gigantic spray gun in my hand and start pumping it? Or better still, some huge strips of sticky paper. I would hang them all around the school and you'd get stuck to them and would be the end of it. Wouldn't that be a good idea, Miss Honey? If it's meant to be a joke, headmistress, I don't think it's a very funny one, Miss Honey said from the back of the class. You wouldn't, would you, Miss Honey, the Trunchbull said, and it's not meant to be a joke. My idea of a perfect school, Miss Honey, is one that has no children in it at all. One of these days, I shall start up a school like that. I think it will be quite successful. The woman's mad, Miss Honey told herself. She's round the twist. She's the one who ought to be got rid of. The Trunchbull now lifted the large blue porcelain water jug and poured some water into her glass. And suddenly, out came the long, slimy newt straight into the glass, saying, plop. The Trunchbull let out a yell and leapt off her chair as though a firecracker had just gone off underneath her. And now the children also saw the long, thin, slimy, yellow-bellied lizard twisting and turning in the glass, and they squirmed and jumped about as well. What is it? Oh, it's disgusting. It's a snake. It's a baby crocodile. It's an alligator. Look out, Miss Trunchbull, cried Lavender. I'll bet it bites. The Trunchbull, this mighty female giant, stood there in her green breeches, quivering like a child. She was especially furious that someone had succeeded in making her jump and yell like that because she prided herself on her toughness. She stared at the creature twisting and wriggling in the glass. Curiously enough, she had never seen a newt before. Natural history was not her strong point. She hadn't the faintest idea what this was. It certainly looked extremely unpleasant. Slowly, she sat down again in her chair. She looked at this moment more terrifying than ever before. The fires of fury and hatred were smoldering in her black eyes. Matilda, she barked, stand up. Who, me? Matilda said. What have I done? I haven't done anything, Miss Trunchbull. Honestly, I haven't. I've never seen that slimy thing before. Stand up, you filthy little kid. Reluctantly, Matilda got to her feet. She was in the second row. Lavender, who was in the row behind her, started feeling a bit guilty. She hadn't intended to get her friend into trouble. On the other hand, she was certainly not about to own up. You are a vile, repulsive, repellent, malicious little brute, the Trunchbull was shouting. You're not fit to be in the school. You ought to be behind bars. That's where you ought to be. I shall have you jumped out of this establishment in utter disgrace. I shall have the perf prefects chase you down the corridors and out of the front doors with hockey sticks. I shall have the staff escort you home under armed guard. And I shall make you absolutely sure that you're sent to a, a place for delinquent girls for a minimum of 40 years. The Trunchbull was in such a rage that her face had taken a boiled color and little flecks of froth were gathering at the corners of her mouth. But she was not the only one who was losing her cool. Matilda was also beginning to see red. She didn't in the least mind being accused of having done something she had actually done. She could see the justice of that. It was, however, a totally new experience for her to be accused of a crime that she definitely had not committed. She had had absolutely nothing to do with that beastly creature in the glass. She thought that, rotty, that rotten trunchbull isn't going to pin this one on me. 
I did not do it, Matilda screamed. Oh, yes, you did, the Trunchbull roared back. Nobody else could have thought up a trick like that. Your father was right to warn me about you. The woman seemed to have lost control of herself completely. She was ranting like a maniac. You're finished in school, young lady, she shouted. You're finished everywhere. I shall personally see to it that you're put away in a place where not even the crows can land their droppings on you. You will probably never see the light of day again. I'm telling you, I did not do it, Matilda screamed. I've never seen a creature like that in my entire life. You put a crocodile in my drinking water, the Trunchbull yelled back. There's no worse crime in the world against a headmistress. Now sit down and don't say a word. Go on, sit down at once. But I'm telling you, Matilda shouted, refusing to sit down. I'm telling you to shut up, the Trunchbull roared. If you don't shut up at once and sit down, I shall remove my belt and let you have with it. Slowly, Matilda sat down. Oh, the rottenness of it all. The unfairness. How dare they expel her for something she hadn't done? Matilda felt herself getting angrier and angrier and angrier, so unbearably angry that something was about to explode inside her very soon. The new it was still squirming in the tall glass of water. It looked horribly uncomfortable. The glass was not big enough for it. Matilda glared at the trunchbull. How she hated her. She glared at the glass with the new it in it. She longed to march up and grab the glass and tip the contents over trunchbull's head. She trembled to think what the trunchbull would do to her if she did that. The trunchbull was sitting behind the teacher's table, staring with a mixture of horror and fascination at the newet wriggling in the glass. Matilda's eyes were also riveted on the glass, and now, quite slowly, there began to creep over Matilda a most extraordinary and peculiar feeling. The feeling was mostly in the eyes. A kind of electricity seemed to be gathering inside them. A sense of power was brewing in those eyes of hers. A feeling of great strength was settling itself deep inside her eyes. But there was also another feeling which was something else altogether and which she could not understand. It was like flashes of lightning. Little waves of lightning seemed to be flashing out of her eyes. Her eyeballs were about to get really hot. It was an amazing sensation. She kept her eyes steadily on the glass, and now the power was concentrating itself in one small part of each eye and growing stronger and stronger, and it felt as though millions of tiny little invisible arms with hands on them were shooting out of her eyes towards the glass that she was staring at. Tip it, Matilda whispered. Tip it over. She saw the glass wobble. It actually tilted backwards a fraction of an inch and then righted itself. She kept pushing at it with all those millions of invisible little arms and hands that were reaching out from her eyes, feeling the power that was flashing straight from the two little black dots in the very center of her eyeballs. Tip it, she whispered again. Tip it over. Once more, the glass wobbled. She pushed harder still, willing her eyes to shoot out more power. And then, very, very slowly, so slowly she could hardly see it happening, the glass began to lean backwards, farther and farther and farther backwards, until it was balancing on just the edge of its base. And there, it teetered for a few seconds before finally toppling over and falling with a sharp tinkle on the desktop. The water in it and the squirming knew it splashed all over Miss Trunchbull's enormous bosom. The headmistress let out a yell that must have been rattled every window pane in the building. And for a second, in the last five minutes, she shot out of her chair like a rocket. The newet clutched desperately at the cotton smock where it covered the greatest chest, and there it clung with its claw-like feet. The trunchbull looked down and saw it, and she bellowed even louder, and with a swipe of her hand, she sent the creature flying across the room. It landed very quickly on, on the floor beside Lavender's desk, and she ducked down and picked it up, put it into the pencil box for another time. A new it, she decided, was a useful thing to have around. The trunchbull, her face more like boiled ham, was standing before the class, quivering with fury. Her massive bosom was heaving in and out, and the splash of water down the front of it made a dark, wet patch that had probably soaked right through her skin. Who did it? she roared. Come on, step forward. You will not escape this time. Who is responsible for this dirty job? Who pushed over this glass? Nobody answered. The whole room remained silent as a tomb. 
Matilda, she roared. It was you. I know it was you. Matilda in the second row sat very still and said nothing. A strange feeling of serenity and confidence was sweeping over her, and all of a sudden she found that she was frightened by nobody in the world. With the power of her eyes alone, she had compelled a glass of water to tip and spill its contents over the horrible headmistress. And anybody who could do that could do anything. Speak up! The trunch bowl roared again. Admit that you did it. Matilda looked right back into the flashing eyes of this infuriated female giant and said with total calmness, I have not moved away from my desk, Miss Trunchbull, since the lesson began. I can say no more. Suddenly, the entire class seemed to rise up against the headmistress. She didn't move, they cried out. Matilda didn't move. Nobody moved. You must have knocked it over yourself. I most certainly did not knock it over myself roared the trunchbull. How dare you suggest such a thing? Speak up, Miss Honey. You must have seen everything. Who knocked over my glass? None of the children did, Miss Trunchbull, Miss Honey answered. I can vouch for it that nobody has moved from his or her desk all the time you've been here except for Nigel, and he has not moved from his corner. Miss Trunchbull glared at Miss Honey. Miss Honey met her gaze without flinching. I'm telling you the truth, Miss Headmistress, she said. You must have knocked it over without knowing it. That sort of thing is easy to do. I am fed up with you, useless bunch of midgets, roared the trunchbull. I refuse to waste any more time in here. And with that, she marched out of the classroom, slamming the door behind her. In the stunned silence that followed, Miss Honey walked up to the front of the class and stood behind her table. Phew, she said. I think we've had enough school for one day, don't you? The class is dismissed. You may all go out into the playground and wait for your parents to come and take you home. And this brings us to the end of that very adventurous chapter. It was quite a surprising turn of events. Um, I'm really excited to see what Matilda does next. Um, but for that, you'll have to stay tuned and watch the next video. Bye-bye.